And uh, from here, uh, same idea. You can click on any of the pen pencil icons to uh, edit the item. So I'll just click on one here. And uh, here's all the uh, information, category, um, you know, different uh, options around that. I don't know if you use the more advanced inventory information, Zach, but it's try, there if you'd like to. Try, try, Zach, try, try and slow down. You're clicking so fast. The, yep. Their screen. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, I bet. You know, from, from, from hey, the hey, page. So, sorry I'm late. And I, Jason, just so you know, I'm recording this so that when you want to go back and look at it, we can, you can play it on YouTube. So. Thank you. And I'm, I'm here with Gary, too. Yeah, hey, Gary. Hi. Thanks for doing, thanks for starting early, Zach. I, I apologize for being late. No problem. Um, yeah, so from this screen, I think the only stuff uh, you really use at the moment is the categories and the uh, descriptions. Um, but you do have this other information available down at the bottom for reorder levels, um, assemblies, uh, unit costs, pricing and such, and uh, certifications and inspections if you'd like to use it. Uh, uh, you don't have to, but it is there if you'd, uh, if you'd like to implement that. Yeah, I can Might be I going can just a hair too fast, those of us. It might be, I, I'm trying to slow it down, but it might also be the choppy internet a little bit this morning. Um, I don't know. If well, I think everything. the pages are clicking funny fast. It, they're, they're keeping up with you, but yeah, you are really flying. You know this thing in and out. Yeah, and they know. Fine. Train someone. If I'm watching them click through stuff, I'm like a click or two behind. I find for me, obviously we can't do this now, but I'd rather sit them down and me tell them, okay, click inventory. After inventory, click on inventory list. So I, I, by the time you've yeah. gone to the page, I didn't we, see what you clicked on to get to it. So I do just we, need you to slow down a little, tell me what you're going to click on, go over there, pause for just a second, and then click on it, okay? Or we we could even flip it around uh, and, l and let you click. That maybe would be helpful. Mm. Uh, okay, I can make them the presenter. If you just slow up because you're recording it, then, then we can always go back and look at it. Or you don't even have to make them the presenters, Zach. Just make them, give them keyboard and mouse. Okay. And then they can uh, do it on your screen. And then, Jason, you should be able to, you know, Zach can almost move, help you move the mouse, but you should be able to move the mouse. Oh, did I do something wrong? I don't think so. Let's are you on a? Do you have a? Do you have a mouse? Or are you on a touchpad? Or? Okay. Yeah, I have a mouse. So let me see. So you see my mouse or no? If you click on the on the screen there, um, it should it should allow you to start moving it. Yeah, you have to be in the window. Quick. Try you have to click in that window to activate it. Yeah, it seems like oh, you're wait. doing something there. Oh, that was me. Oh. If I can uh, just turn it off and turn it back on, uh, see if it connects properly. Worst case, we just flip it over to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, no wait. So you've been given keyboard and mouse control. So do I click switch to desk or no thanks? Oh, you might be on the web version. Uh, yeah, that 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 one I don't think has the. Uh, yeah, he is the, on the uh, web version. Control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's flip control over to him, and then it'll download the desktop version. It'll force him to switch. I think that's what happened. So it it says Citrix Online Launcher. So the, yeah, there you, you go. Know. Yeah, launch. So I have to launch. The Okay. 
Okay, it says it's installing the launcher. Downloading. Installing plugin. So going through all this, it says unzipping. Launching. So I have our original page, the go to meeting. And oh, wait, let me see here. And I still don't have any page. There's a second page that says global dot go to meeting. It says connected to go to meeting. So schedule a session right from your calendar. It seems like it's something huh. really different. I think I need that. Um, if you go, if you uh, go back to the meeting link that Ben sent over uh, earlier, you might be able to reopen okay. that. And, uh, and let me try. I'm that. just gonna. I'm gonna make him the presenter. I think it's gonna force you into it, Gary. Well, that could work. <laughs> Or Jason, sorry. Is it doing anything on your end now? Um, I had clicked on that link already, and uh, a page is opening, but it is the global page. Let's see what happens. Like if you show your screen now. Let's see. Share your screen. To become a presenter, go. please download a small extension. Yeah, there you go. So, you need to download that. Oh, it's doing something. Hey Zach, I have a question for you that's off subject. Mm -hmm. If you if you do a filter on like the item master list, you have value A and value B, and you accidentally sent value B to like a thousand, and is there any way to blank the box out? You know, like so it's not selected, or is zero the same as not selected? No, zero is probably not the same as not selected. Uh, it, in some areas of the system, it is. Um, it just depends on where you're at. Yeah, so you added a filter, mind. and it's. Yeah, well. Yeah, we did. We added a filter, and then Cliff at Equipment Parts set it to a thousand, which I mean works, but it was better when it was nothing, and I wanted to try to take that back off. Well, you can delete the filter, or you can. Um, I guess I could. Yeah, I could delete the filter, but let me just save it and see what happens. Seven. Uh, I, I think uh, this has worked now. It it does. Uh, I just put show. Yeah, we're yeah we're, we're seeing yeah yeah we're seeing your screen. So let me give it back okay. to Zach. I'm gonna give it back to Zach. 
And then he's going to uh, give you keyboard and mouse. Did I give it back to you, Zach? Uh, I think so. Okay. Now see if you can give Jason and Gary for keyboard and mouse. Okay. All right. So log in as admin. Is that what you did? Uh, you should see Zach's screen. Oh, you shouldn't have right. to log in. You should be able to just click on Zach's screen and then there you go. It says you have controls. So if you click on like the category pull down where it says bottle. Where am I supposed to be looking? Well, do you see the screen? Oh, okay. here. Wait. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there you go. Right. Now you're moving it. Okay. Right. okay, so we went under inventory before and then inventory before, right? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. All right. So we were looking at uh, adding an item. So you said we just click on edit. And this is where we just were. Uh, and then I put in the item ID, the description. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, if you want to add a new one, you want to click the add new box up top or copy right, the new right. down on the bottom. Okay, right. So this right, would be for right now, I, Yeah, right now you're editing that item. Okay, right. Um, so where is the standard that we have assigned to this item? Is that on, that's standard. on a separate sheet then. It, the production standard. standard. That's how we, we yeah. That's how we get the efficiency. Well, we put down uh, 0.25 RG. That's 25 ounce round glass, and we have a standard for how many pieces they should produce for that item. And that that's uh, be, that information is stored under the efficiency codes uh, page, I believe. Um, so that would be like right here. Or it might be under the production codes catalog. I don't remember exactly. It's been a it's been a little while. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just let's take a look at that and figure it out because that's something that we're having items that we're going to need to add, uh, and mm -hmm. we may have efficiencies that we need to edit and change. So uh, standards, I should say. So okay. So that was okay, under. So here, was that under? That's under orders, and then other, and then uh, efficiency codes. And you'll get to this list, and uh, you can click the Add New button here, and uh, you can add a new one, and you can do this for each different uh, each different code that you have. Okay, so once you click on the Add New button, uh, you get here to the item ID and the production code. So you can just select the the item ID. Of course, that's glitching, <laughs> um, and then you can select the production code. Um, I'll take a look at the item ID one after after this meeting and get that fixed. Um, but here you can select which production code you want to specify for. So if I wanted to say uh, 301 is uh, 4,000 units for uh, whatever new item I select, I can just you know specify that right here and uh, click save. <clears throat> is that something you think you might be able to fix quick, Zach? Or does it look like it might be... Uh... Um, I I can fix it, you know, but I have to log into the database and you know screw around for a couple minutes to uh, to find where this is at. Did you happen to look into the the new iOS yet that they released? I didn't down I didn't upgrade yet. Are there any issues that you know of with that? Ah, they did another one. Uh, which version? Yeah. Okay, uh, iOS updates. Oh, is that iOS ten? I think so. Um, I think that's still in preview. I didn't. I don't think they fully released that yet. Uh, uh, you're right. It's showing me nine three four. I need to now upgrade to nine three four. So I don't know what. Yes, nine I, nine three four works. Um, that that's what's on my my iPad, and I've been testing with lately. Um, I know they're upgrading to iOS ten. Um, they're they're working on they're working on it at the moment. Um, so that'll be coming, and as soon as that releases, I'll be testing with that. Okay. So. So let me go back. If I go to orders, and you said it was other efficiency codes, 
you can just press cancel. <clears throat> Um, if we had added a product, then it would be listed on here. But we first need mm. to add the product before we can do anything here, right? Right. Like if I want to add, you know, 128 ounce round glass and it's not on our product list yet, first I need to go add that product, then come mm. here to add the efficiency for that product, right? Right. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, so then once it's added. I would click on edit and just change the number of units, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yeah, so if you'd like and to change, uh, you, you can set those when you create the record, or if you need to change them later, you can come back in and change them as well. Right. Mm -hmm. When you if you added a new item in the item master list, Jason, you'd have to click add do in that efficiency code list versus edit. It doesn't automatically populate the list. Okay, and that was under inventory, right? I go inventory, item, master list, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Just writing this down. Well, you're gonna and you're gonna have a video too. Yeah, but then I don't have to scroll through all the video. <laughs> <laughs> item master list. And then there we go under create new item. Put in the item ID, the description. <clears throat> why don't you put it in if you have one? If you know you have one, why don't you go ahead and do it? You know, I don't know what one is offhand. Um, I don't know. I know we've already tried to use them. And I'm just, you know, for testing purposes, I just I'm putting other things in that I at least okay. think have a similar efficiency standard. So uh, at okay. least the, the numbers that come back are, are accurate, even though it's not the right item. But uh, at least I see what I need to do there to add those in. Um, okay. Do we need to fill in category, center code, default supplier, any of that, or just item ID and description? I believe the only three f fields that are used for the uh, any of the other records are just item ID, description, and category. Those are the only three that are being used at the moment. So Category. Oh, and that'll be bottle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what else did I have? Employees. I need to add employees and control their start times. Where do I do that? Uh, if you click on System at the top of the screen, and then on the Accounts column, uh, the third one down is Employees. System, Account. Employees, okay, hold on. Okay. All right, and here too, we just click Add New, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. In their name, and any information we want there, huh? I guess I can look at yep. what the other see what information is in there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and then there's Shift start, that's where we're putting either 6, 7 a.m., 3 p.m. if they're second shift, right? Yes, right. Uh, I, I used a 24-hour format there just to keep it simple. So, right. you know, if they're starting at 1 o'clock, you just put in a 13. Uh, you can also do like 13.5 if it's 1.30 or something like that. Okay, perfect. Um, I think that's all I need to know for that. Um, now, I know... You were using a lot of numbers, like a, a cell phone number with, with some other things. What, where does that get filled in? It's not. Is it probably not even necessary, or is something? It's necessary to put no, something in. No, it, it is necessary, and it's okay. in a different uh, table. So you got to go to system. Okay, where is that at? So create. So what I would here's what Gary and Jason. What I would do is I would go through and add all your employees. You know, have. Either you guys do it or one of your admin people do it. Just go through and add everybody yeah. in here. Okay. Okay. And then what you want to do is click on system. And then system users underneath accounts, it's like straight down the second one in the list. System okay. users. Okay. Okay. 
So you also need to have a record for everybody in here. Uh, so this is how you log into the system. So there's two things. There's like a login ID and then an employee record that's associated with your login ID. Okay. okay. So you need to do both. Okay. And this is also so where the badge number is stored. So uh, this is right. what you know they can scan in and uh, and such. <clears throat> so if you click Add so, User uh, in the upper upper right there, just like right. you were adding employee, there's just more fields in here, um, or, or different fields. But two of them, you know, are the login and password. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this that's what people will log in with when they go over to a station that, that's not logged into Inventory Pro. Right. Okay. And then if you come down, there's two fields that you really need to key on, the employee ID, okay? Yeah. If, if you've gone through and added all your employees it, and you click the list, the login name that you enter is going to match an employee name in your list, okay? I see. So, so here. Yeah, so if you added John Doe as the right, login please. above, you, you should see John Doe in this list. Right, okay. Okay, if you... So you if do you, have to do you, the other part first. You have to add right. them first and come over here. Right, mm -hmm. that's the way I would do it. Right. And then the badge number, you can put... We use cell phone numbers, I believe, which are right, unique yeah. to everybody. So you guys can use whatever number you want, but... Because we knew cell phone numbers were unique, that's what we used. And people okay. also re Good. people also remember them. You know, they remember their own cell phone number. Right. Okay. So, you know, again, most everybody nowadays has a cell phone number. And if they don't, maybe you say use your home phone number. And if yeah. they don't have both, it's like, why are you working for me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let me go under orders, um, and work order. You can just cancel, just cancel. again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, I pull up a work order here. I preview it. Is it easy enough to Oh, I don't have it here. Hold on. I, I want to. I want the the notes to show up on this preview, the the work order preview. Um, mm -hmm. I, this section right here shows up. This quarter round PP jar, but that's not under the notes. Let me go back and. Yeah, I think we've done that five. before for uh, another client. So here um, down in notes, I wrote sample. So can mm -hmm. we just get this field to show up because description is what showed up here. I'd like if mm -hmm. we could add some notes on there and that would also show up on mm -hmm. that work board. Yeah, yeah sure. write that down. Yeah, Zach's making a note. Okay. I wanted to start to implement and use this a little bit more but I needed to start to be able to put employees in, and I needed to add some items and maybe um, adjust some of the standards, mm -hmm. the efficiency standards. So those were like the three, the four main things that I really had to figure out how to do on my own so I didn't have to keep coming back to you guys and say, can you change this, can you add this? I gotta be able to take care of that and then get some more people using this uh, and then, uh, I did use the, uh, I extracted the, the information that we got, and uh, I told Zach before you joined us, Ben, that I do have a, an IT guy who made that little elaborate Excel sheet for us, and I, I gave him the extrapolated data that we pulled out of your system and asked him, figure out a way to drop this into our Excel sheet. So I know he's working on that now. Okay, great. Uh, we, that sounds good. Darren and I were just seeing, I don't think that it, it's worth doing any more with your filtering. Uh, where were we looking at that, Gary? Well, we, we were trying to, like, 
bring in multiple filters that you can only do one filter at a time. Yeah, so that's actually that probably broken in uh, your version. Uh, we will be updating it when I fix that bug later today. Um, the let me uh, fresh that there. Um, if I go over to the uh, reports, right? Reports. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I think it would be under work orders, but I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, employee yep. efficiency report. Good. Yeah, so if you go to the filters page here, um, on your version, um, based on the date this was published, it might have the bug where you can only add one filter at a time. Um, it's not that you can only add one filter, um, but it doesn't always show the extra filters and uh, different things like that, and they don't always apply properly. So um, that's been resolved recently, so we'll, uh, we'll get you updated and get that fixed for you. Wow. So, so, so we can filter, if we want to look at uh, an employee's name and the, and the operation date. 301. Yeah, and a, and a date or an employee and a work order. We can mm. we can do multiple filters. Yeah, mm. you can do that. That if you couldn't before, it's a bug and it's fixed. Yeah, if that, that might be all we need then, where I may not even have to use. And that's what I know that you were kind of getting to before, Ben. That we might not have to use our sheet. If, if we can get the filters that we need out of this system, then even better. If we don't have to even worry about getting it out of here and over into our system. But we yeah, need to, think, to add multiple filters. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think we have a fix for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so all I need it, to do it, is uh, update it to the latest version, and uh, you should get to go on that. It looked like it was working there, Zach. Um, it might be showing them, but it might based on the date and the fact that this doesn't have the version number shown at the bottom, um, this was published in May, and I, know, and I know in June we had a number of problems with that with uh, JVIC, so. It's showing error down on the bottom, so maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's one of those things, uh, well, uh, a very large system, so. Without taking any more of your guys' time, thanks so much, you answered those those few main questions. I'm going to get some additional employees in there, some additional items, and uh, try to get a couple more. Meantime, Zach, you're going to take a look at that multiple filter usage. You're going to try to add mm -hmm. the notes onto the work order. And the first thing you were going to look into, I forget, that you made a uh, the item, filter. The item ID selection on the efficiency codes list was not working properly, so that's on my list okay. as well. Yep. All right. Do you think of anything else, Gary? No, I like those filters. Yep. Biggest. All right, hopefully, guys. Uh, hopefully we'll have it for you this afternoon. That would be great. Mm -hmm. That would be great. And then uh, that would be great because then starting Monday, I'll, I'll get some people entered in here, and I'll try to get a couple more people. I was getting some feedback from um, the, the one girl that I had doing this. Her first day, I had her using the laptop that we had with the scanner. and. Her initial comment was she has already memorized a lot of the production codes. She said it's faster for me just to type it in there than to right. even look and refer to the sheet and scan it. Right, absolutely. So she was finding already that, that she didn't really have to use the scanner. And, that, and then right. the ones that she does have to look up, she can look it up and, and it's just as easy for her to type it in rather than scan it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, so we tried to tell you that before, code. but... Uh, <laughs> you have to experience it. You have to experience it to realize it. So that's going to happen. Yeah. So. yeah. Uh, and then uh, I asked her about uh, using her phone because uh, you know she said that she said that is becoming convenient to be able to just reach in her pocket, pull out her phone, pull up the the uh, page, and yeah, why not? bring stuff up. Yeah, so perfect. I, that's I'm what really you want to hear. That I, yeah, I said to Zach, for how frustrating this seemed uh, for the past couple of months, I'm getting very encouraged. So it looks like it's really coming together. I'm excited for next week to try to get a couple more people using this thing and uh, get the multiple filters in there. And we will really be able to see how we're recording, if it's reducing Gary's time, it doesn't have to re-input stuff in here, and we're recording all the information that we need that's accurate and see if there's any more bugs in there, but it's really coming together. I, I'm really encouraged. Great. That's what we want to hear.
We want you okay. to use it. <laughs> yeah, me too. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll load this video up on YouTube for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah, just send me a link. Thanks.